we have all our commissioners here and we can go ahead and get started. With that, our meeting is called to order. We would like to begin this meeting by acknowledging that we are all, wherever we are, located on the ancestral lands of the Coast Salish peoples. The Duwamish, Sokamish, Stulugamish, and Malkushud tribes people that continue to live here and honor their, their heritage. We'll do the land acknowledgement to ensure that we're not supporting the erasure of the indigenous peoples of this land. And we continue to celebrate and support their resiliency. With that, our meeting has begun. What you see in front of you is our agenda for the meeting today. I would like us to discuss a possible amendment and change to the agenda to include a discussion on the schedule that we will be using in making decisions around amendments. And I also hope that we can make time at the end of our meeting to have a discussion on the draft resolution and how commissioners will be providing your input to uh, staff in pulling together the resolution in preparation for it being submitted to the CLAC. With that said, I'll entertain any motions or discussions from folks in allowing a change to the agenda to have time to discuss our timeline. Commissioner O'Sullivan. Uh, yeah, so I'd be interested in having that, in putting that discussion about the timeline of decision-making and amendments prior to public comment, um, so that when the public is commenting, they'll have information about when we're gonna be making those decisions. Um, so with, uh, with that amendment, I would uh, uh, move for adoption of the agenda as amended. Any second? Second. Sure, sure. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions or nays? The majority carries and we have an adopted agenda and we'll make time for a discussion on the scheduling realignment. With that, we want to move ahead to adopt our minutes uh, from the October 4th meeting as well as the October 8th public forum that we had. So let's start off with the October 4th. I'm sure you all had an opportunity to review the minutes as written, and we will take a motion to adopt the minutes. <clears throat> I wasn't at that meeting, so I don't feel comfortable making such a motion. I move to adopt the October 4th minutes from the meeting. <laughs> Thank you, right. Commissioner Shah. Second. Fantastic. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstentions? Thank you. And the motion carries. We have an adopted minutes and Commissioner Nichols will be abstaining from the vote. And then October 8th public forum minutes have also been shared and we would like to take a motion to adopt the minutes. Move to adopt uh, as presented. Commissioner Shah, you have your hand up. Um, in reviewing the those minutes, I didn't see any of the commissioner's comments included at the bottom. And maybe that was purposeful to be succinct. I just wanted to note that. Staff, would you like to respond? Um, 
we can include them if you need if you let us know we can uh, include them for the next yeah i would suggest that we table consideration of the minutes until we have a draft that includes commissioner's comments thank you commissioner sullivan um and i, I would draw my motion you would draw your motion thank you commissioner nichols so we will take up the discussion on the minutes from the forum at our next meeting. With that, we're moving on to acknowledgement of uh, received comments. We've seen a higher volume of public comments so far, both responding to the revised map that we have and some of the amendments that have been so far discussed. Acknowledgement that you've all read and seen the comments. I just want to note that I'm also excited that we have looks like some high school students getting involved in this analysis. Really exciting. Well, they all seem oh, to be on the same, same page. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it looks like some of them are saying that the uh, swap is equitable and some are disagreeing. So uh, yeah, I've seen some what a great age to get involved in in your city. <laughs> I mean, it's been surely the highlight, the level of engagement that we're seeing across communities has just been uh, encouraging to many of us. With that, we will move on to public um, disclosures, any disclosures you have on conversations you most recently had that may pose uh, optics of conflict. None, okay. We'll move ahead to our discussion on the amended timeline. Uh, Elsa, I would like to invite uh, staff to share screen for the commissioners in looking at the scenario that we're considering um, at this particular moment. Um, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. So I wanted to um, share with you two scenarios for timeline. Um, this will be voting today, and this the one below will be voting on October 18th. And where will that take us? And so if the commission decides on voting today on the map, uh, that will be a final meeting to amend the draft based on comments. And that gives us enough time. Uh, we would publish it today. And um, between October 12th and October 25th, that's when um, well, you're requesting for um, written comments and including the key county elections that we know will have some revisions and we've known them from before. And then uh, the commission could meet on October 25th, which is, all, these are all Tuesdays except for today, um, and uh, meet to vote and approve the final map. And that will give us a day or two. That's why they have an asterisk for um, our team to get ready um, to submit the map to the clerk's office. And um, I see Ariel's hand. I want to make sure that I'm saying it right before you keep going. Yeah, sorry, Elsa. Um, I just wanted to check in. Um, so if you're talking about um, how, if, if you're looking for feedback from King County after adopting um, any amendment, uh, any amended draft map, um, then we would need to have another meeting to adopt any amendments in response to King County's uh, suggestions and then wait at least a week again before adopting the final map. So I just want to make that clear. Yeah, thank you. We, I, we've been talking, we've been in communications with them, Mary and I, about what we can do for this and maybe hopefully to share with them the, the before you vote, like the, and you couldn't do it today, but um, any changes that could happen. And so we would have to have and possibly another meeting October 18th to, um, to then um, make sure that, that those changes were reflected in there. So, Ariel, so that will then affect this uh, October 25th, right? If we were to do that with this, well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to per se, but um, so basically, you know, what happened last time when when the commission adopted the draft map is that King County elections was, you know, luckily they were paying attention and and we're happy that they were and they made some suggestions. But um, in order to um, incorporate those suggestions, you have to further amend the plan. So just as long as you make sure, if you're making a further amendment after adopting an amended draft plan. 
just re just remember that you have to kind of reset the clock for adopting um, the final plan. That's it. So in that scenario, we would be finishing by October 26th if there were no amendments by King County and if we can get them earlier, um, uh, then we would have to just make sure that the dates match. For scenario two, and then I'm gonna uh, mark this, um, voting on October 18th, that would mean that um, that Tuesday you make um, an, an amendment draft. And if we were to do that, we would send, for instance, today, you guys would have to decide, um, make a decision on the final draft, and then, or the one that is getting closer to, so we can send to King County ahead of time, so we can get as much uh, details and possibly vote on October 18th. So the final commission uh, meeting to vote and approve that map would be on November 1st. And um, give or take, we would uh, submit November 2nd um, to, to the clerk's office. Well, thank you, Elsa. I do see Commissioner Sullivan, and I know that earlier, Commissioner Shah, you had your hand up if you want to come back after Commissioner Sullivan. Uh, so I, I'm like really surprised at these proposals. It was, it was my understanding that we had several more weeks of discussion that, that the map, the final map is due on November 15th. And, and I understand, I understood that to mean that we had to take a, a final vote on, uh, on a, basically on a final map on November 8th. Um, but I, I guess I, I'm not sure that I've heard from all the other commissioners what what their final proposal is. So I, I was expecting that we would be talking about different maps today, taking some votes on uh, potentially on October 18th, but still having an opportunity to react to each other's maps and, and to um, what what uh, everybody is planning on doing. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to understand why everything is boot, is is move, being moved up three three weeks or so. Thank you, Commissioner Sullivan. I share in the sense, in terms of the timeline, that it, the most important part is the one week gap between when we adopt the last amendments to when we submit the final map. Um, and that November 8th number remains a safe number for us to still meet our deadline by November 15th. I think the intent by staff here not to speak for you, Elsa, is to be proactive on our part to get done in time for any additional um, changes or consideration that may happen in between. So Commissioner Shah, over to you. Yeah, I was I was um, also it's similar. I, I don't know that I'm comfortable waiting until November 8th would be the absolutely last moment. So if anything goes wrong, we don't have any leeway and just unexpected delays of bureaucracy, who knows, right? <laughs> um, so I would be comfortable, you know, thinking about November 1st or October 25th even, but I wasn't prepared to have a final vote today either. And it's great that we're doing it because I am realizing that November 1st, if we're meeting that day, I'm scheduled to be on an airplane, so I need to change my flight. So whatever we decide, I'll I'll act accordingly. Thank you, Commissioner. Ariel, we see you have your hand up. Uh, just to add, but, um, so yeah, these are, we're kind of in the tail end here. Um, and I know you want to keep as much time as possible to deliberate on, on your amendments. Um, I just also want to put in your minds, since it's at your discretion, if you, you know, the, the schedule as it is right now is based off of our, our regular meeting schedule. And if you need to or desire to, to move to special meetings for any reason, we can, you know, that might be an option as well. Um, if you're, if you're finding that the scheduling is, is going to be really tough. Um, again, though, so um, just to just to keep kind of the our definitions clear, um, there's the date for making your final amendments. So your final, 
your um, your last amendments to the draft. And at that point, it's still a draft plan. Then there's at least a week of written public comment at a minimum. I mean, you can also um, have a period of, of public comment, but at a minimum, written public comment for at least a week, and then you meet to adopt the final plan. Now, we recommend putting um, a time cushion after that adoption of the final plan so that the city has some room to get that plan over to the King County Auditor. Um, you never know what's going to go on with te technology or, you know, acts of God or anything else. Um, we want to make sure that we, we do this right and we have the time to do this right. So um, the, the important part is that the, uh, by November 15th, the plan gets over to the King County Auditor. Um, does that make sense for everybody? It absolutely does. I see commissioners have their hands up. Commissioner Sullivan and Commissioner Shaw. Um, so um, I uh, I was hoping to present some suggested amendments that Commissioner Shaw and I worked on this past Friday. I expect those to be the last amendments that I intend to present. So I guess before making any sort of decision about what the timeline is, I'd like to hear from other commissioners whether they plan on proposing some significant amendments today. I don't know, uh, Chair Malaba, if, if the amendment that you proposed at the last meeting is, is one that you want to move for a vote today or next week. Um, and oh, I, I, I guess I want to hear from the other commissioners about uh, whether you're proposing amendments today or next week or what, what your hope is in terms of voting on any of those proposed amendments. Thank you, Commissioner. Any responses from fellow commissioners? Commissioner Shah, you had your hand up ready. Um, I, I don't plan on, aside from what we've worked on with uh, Commissioner O'Sullivan, the two of us worked on, showing that today. I mean, I think I'm a little unclear about whether we'd be voting on two different amendments or whether we'd be sharing them and because probably whichever one is voted on would be kind of the final amendment, but I'm not planning on bringing forward anything else after today. Um, I'll save the, my other comment for after other commissioners respond. Go ahead, Commissioner Morris. Um, so I think I'm looking for leadership from the chair around the process you would like us to use to introduce amendments. I think that because of the nature of the project at hand, we quickly adopted an amendment after a consensus map. We're in the final stages here. The timeline is compressed. We will be quickly adopting or rejecting additional amendments depending on the content of that. What I don't want to happen is us go through an iterative process that is cut short by the calendar versus where we feel it is most appropriate and that is inclusive of all five of our voices. Um, so I would love to see a proposal, I think probably from you and staff together about how you would like amendments to be produced so that community has the opportunity to see them. And that gives us all a chance to, I think adequately debate uh, what's in front of us. I don't plan, I only, I have two amendments that I would probably be bringing forward. It is obviously dependent on what um, that schedule will look like. Yeah. I am in favor of additional meetings if we need to do that. Um, so I think that's that's where I am. I was not prepared to vote on final maps today. I also was not prepared to bring additional amendments today because I didn't feel like that was the expectation of the commissioners at this particular meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Wars. And I will respond to the question on next steps and process here. Commissioner Nichols, if you want to jump in and share your thoughts. I will when I feel it. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> I will propose that as we do move forward in our discussions, we allow time today to discuss amendments. I do intend to propose an amendment, Commissioner Sullivan, to your question. Uh, and if we can have the discussion on what you have developed as an amendment, 
with Commissioner Shah. I've also taken feedback from Commissioner Shah and incorporated that in the amended uh, proposal that I will share here today. Uh, and then we can allow time for this meeting to not be one where we vote on a final amendment. I did not come in ready to vote on an amendment today. I came in ready though to finalize what our next steps are and have those options be voted on at the October 18th meeting. Um, I do understand the concern from folks in having as much time in terms of timeline uh, towards the end, but I also am very cognizant from experience the technical hiccups that can happen and sometimes the bureaucracy that can limit our efficiency here to the end. So if we, if we can, if it's possible to end earlier, November 2nd feels like a very safe place to allow for any contingency time that may be needed. So we'll pause here before uh, clarifying suggestions on next steps in case Commissioner Sullivan, you would like to expand on uh, the comments I've made so far. I, I guess I, I still wanna make sure I, I understand both Commissioner Juarez and Commissioner Nichols. So Commissioner Juarez, you have said you have two amendments that you plan to introduce, but you're not gonna introduce them today. Is that, did I understand that correctly? I said I have, sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner Ors. So to clarify, I said I have two potential proposals that I'm interested in seeing represented. Whether or not those are amendments is dependent on what I think what you and Commissioner Shaw are presenting today. Um, and whether or not we adopt, I think the amendment we had talked about at the last meeting around Commissioner Malaba's map. So uh, they have not been worked on with staff yet, which is why I'm unprepared to like introduce them. So, so I guess given, given the, and, and okay, so I think I understand Commissioner, did, Commissioner Nichols, um, do, do you um, intend to propose amendments? Do you have projects that you're working on? I just want to get a sense of where we're all at. No, I, I feel like we're late in the process and the kinds of amendments that, that I would prefer, we've discussed well in the past and uh, I don't intend to bring them back. Okay, so um, I guess given given the time, what what I understand to be some of our time limitations, I would request that Commissioner Juarez that you not wait to to see what amendments get passed. That everybody present what whatever they're working on so that we all have a chance to look at what the proposals are by the next meeting on the 18th because if, if we don't know like because we're, we're not going to vote on on any of these amendments until the 18th and so if we wait until after the 18th to decide whether we're making more amendments then it seems like we're not going to have enough time to to consider those so my, my request to other commissioners is to be prepared to present at the meeting on the 18th, any changes you're hoping or suggesting. Thank you, Commissioner O'Sullivan. I would edit that and ask that folks discuss changes in depth today. Um, I think what Commissioner Juarez was indicating was that if any of the changes he would like seen are not represented in the amendments before us, he would be open to bring those in front of the commission. Um, and he can share more thoughts as we discuss the proposed map amendments that we have before us, both the one that you have and the one that I will bring up for discussion here during our next section after the public comment period. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Great. And I think as with all of us, I, you know, I would hope that we would all reserve the right to amend as we choose, but yeah. obviously I think within the next two meetings is where we know the the bulk of these amendments will take place, but I'm not gonna commit to not amending after that. Absolutely. Well, with that great discussion, I would like to hear from the commissioners if we can get a motion for scenario two to move forward as is, or if you would like to make any additional tweaks to this timeline. 
I need a moment to just look at it one more time. So yeah. not, not responding, I'm reading it again. Madam Chair. Yes. I, uh, I, I think scenario two looks fine. I'm wondering if um, or why we're waiting two weeks uh, before um, approving the final plan as opposed to one week. I think we have to provide one week for written comments. Um, which would take us to October 25th. I'm concerned about some of the wheels coming off as well. And if we are agreed upon or a majority is agreed upon a, a plan, I, I don't see what that extra week gives us. Ariel, you want to pick this up and clarify further? Sure. Um, uh, the commissioner is right. Statutorily, it's a minimum of one week. Um, I think the recommendation for that calendar, and it's the proposed calendar, is just recommend as recommended, is to account for any last minute recommendations that are good ones, perhaps from <laughs> county elections. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> uh, what are good recommendations? I'll leave up to the commission, but. You know, just to allow for any emergency amendment that you, I don't want you, the commission, to have their hands tied by having be by being by delaying their amendment uh, amended draft vote to the very last minute, so that one there's no possibility for making a, a necessary amendment, um, even if they wanted to. That yeah. that was the thinking. Well, um, okay. Uh, but when, like you're right, the statutorily, um, I, just a minimum of one week. Yeah. But I, I really like how you frame that, Ariel, with the qualification that any good amendments or additions uh, could be made during that timeline. Commissioner Sullivan, I see you have your hand up and you've taken it down. Go ahead, Commissioner Shaw. I'm very sorry to request this, but just if folks are at all able to move our November 1st meeting to October 31st, um, that would save me a lot of headache. But if it's not, I think this is probably a critical critical meeting and um, you know, I'll, I'll do what I have to do. But I just wanted to put that out there in the event that it's a possibility. So why would the 25th work as well for you, Commissioner? Sure, I'm. I'm just like literally on an airplane November first during our meeting time, no, I, which, I which was my that. mistake. I just, I don't know, life is crazy right now, <laughs> so that that was my mistake. But um, to get to another meeting that evening, but um, I could do it the twenty fifth. But it seems like um, our legal counsel is advising us to not vote on the twenty fifth, but rather November first. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any problem with October twenty fifth. And it seems like that gives us a little bit more of a buffer time, but perhaps it takes away from discussion time. So I don't have a strong feeling on that. I'll leave it to if anyone else does. Yeah, Commissioner Juarez. Um, just chiming in that both the, the 25th and the 31st work for me. So you know, if this is a small change and we don't have large objection, I'm fine with moving it. Yeah, I could make um, November 1st work or October 25th work. Commissioner Sullivan. So I guess I want to understand what this means. So if, if we're meeting, so Commissioner Juarez doesn't have anything to present today, but maybe presenting additional amendments, meaning that the amendments would be both presented and voted on on the 18th, if I understand that correctly. Um, I guess my, my hope is that we have at least a week between when an amendment is presented and when we vote on it. So if I, I guess I'm concerned about this schedule, because if I understand it correctly, it means that we're going to potentially be having amendments presented on the 18th and have to vote on those amendments on the 18th. So if it's so I guess my my request would be that if, if everybody is prepared to present whatever amendments they want to present 
either today or on the 18th, then we vote on them on the 25th, then, and, and I, I'm available on, on the 1st, if or on the 31st, if we need to move the meeting to the 31st instead of the 1st. But I, I my concern about this current schedule is that if I understand it correctly, we might be learning about and having to vote on amendments on the same day. I mean, is that different from the last set of amendments that we did? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, we, I presented those on the 20th and we voted on the 27th. All right. So let me chime in here and help us move forward and wrap this section up. Um, I think what I'm hearing from all of you is that today we will spend time after public comment discussing proposed amendments. Uh, Commissioner Warris will take on looking at those uh, proposed amendments and providing any of his considerations for amendments. And if he feels there's need for a proposal, he will have an opportunity to do so uh, at the October meeting. We'll still have time to be able to do that uh, and vote possibly alongside the line as laid out here. I think the November timeline seems to be uh, solid for most folks besides the request from uh, Commissioner Shah that we accommodate the change uh, for the November 1st meeting. And we can talk further about that. But I, I don't believe that we won't have enough time for the any amendments to be discussed with this laid out scenario that's before us. Commissioner Shah. I'm just summarizing to make sure I understand. So today we will discuss amendments. If anything else comes up, we would discuss amendments again on the 18th and potentially vote on amendments on yeah. the 18th. However, yeah. we might vote on amendments on the 25th. And then on the 31st, we would take the final vote on the map. And that still gives us enough time to process it through. Is that I would hope that we can vote by October 18th, having had two meetings to discuss the amendments. Ariel, do you want to chime in here and help us stay compliant? If, uh, if Commissioner O'Sullivan yeah, brought something forward on the 18th, then we couldn't take our final vote. Anyway, it would be helpful to have this all written out because clearly I'm not I'm not quite tracking it. Sorry, Commissioner Shaw. So if I'm, um, let me just jump in. So if I think what you, if I heard you right, you were saying um, do the final amendment vote uh, the 25th and then do the final map vote the 31st, 31st, that would not be sufficient time by statute. Remember, we need at least a week between the, um, between the uh, uh, amended draft and the final. Ah, because that changes the date by one day. Yeah. Got it. All right, so I guess we need to solidify that we can discuss amendments, considerations or proposals today. And next week is when we take up those proposed amendments for a vote on October 18th. Uh, Commissioner Nichols, I see you ready to chime in here. Well, again, I, I don't accept that we couldn't take a a vote on amendments on the 18th and then do the final vote on the 25th. Uh, that gives seven days, which is what is required by charter. Um, and unless there's a great deal of value to moving it to uh, the 31st, um, I, I just don't see why we don't. That way, if something goes wrong on the 25th, we have time to deal with um, that eventuality. Commissioner Juarez, or do we want to start with Ariel? Um, I'll go ahead. Um, so I'm completely, I mean, the amendments that may be introduced today might be incredible, right? Like I think we're planning for a contingency that I, that I or others are going to disagree with them. And I wanna make that clear that like, we may get to agreement on this today, right? The, I'm saying that we need to reserve the possibility on the 18th, there are additional fixes based on comments 
from the public. And I wanna reserve that moment to introduce amendments from any one of us, right? I think that we can go forward with the discussion today and hold the timeline as it is where we are meeting today, talking again on the 18th, talking again on the 25th, and then, you know, calling it a day. I think, I guess to me, and to reiterate Commissioner Shaw's, I'm having a hard time because it's not written down in front of me. <laughs> but like, if we sacrifice the 25th for the 31st, first, we are just giving additional time. We're not actually setting ourselves back for the final vote. Mm. Are you able to see the draft on the screen though, all of you? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Commissioner Warris. Uh, Commissioner Shah? Having, having heard that, I think that we could say October 25th that we're taking our, now um, there's, we have to take a final vote a week before. So November, it we'd have to take our final vote on the 25th then. Ariel? Um, so it sounds like folks are moving up the, the adoption vote, it sounds like, to, to the end of November. Is that what I'm hearing, the final adoption vote, when we're, we're saying final, or is it we're saying final uh, amendment vote, November 25th? But also I want to point out that um, uh, this proposed calendar they're all looking at are, uh, ends November 2nd for filing to the commissioner. By statute, it's November 15th. So, you know, that leaves a November 8th meeting date. If you absolutely feel like you're running out of runway, we can, we can do that. And then we would have a week of buffer to be able to turn around the plan and submit it to the, um, uh, submit it to King County. I mean, I I don't think that any of us want to get to the get to the bitter end and have have, have that risk of somehow not filing. So I guess, I mean, I I think that I'd be comfortable moving everything up to the twenty fifth to to take our vote, um, and hopefully by the end of the discussion today, all the commissioners will comment. And if it feels that we're going to have some big changes coming up, we would know that by the end of our discussion today. So October 25th as the final vote meeting date. Is that correct? Well, I guess that's voting on a final amendment, and then we still have to vote on a final plan, right? There are two different final votes we have to take. No, I don't think so. Well, any amendments that happen need to happen in week between the final map submission. Ariel, could you clarify? Okay, so if we, if we vote on the right. 25th, then it we have plenty of time to submit. So if you vote, if you, well, I think Commissioner Shaw might help when you're saying vote, when you, is that, do you mean voting on any final amendments or on the map, uh, on the final adoption of the map? So on the 25th, if we voted on the final amendments, which would likely be our final map, we still have to give a week we still have to give, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You still have to give a week and then reconvene to formally adopt the map. Okay, right. So we we need, right. So I would say October 25th, I would write in that space that you have there, vote on final amendments. And then the next week you would have to vote on the final map, right? There's two different votes. Correct. Yeah. That just assumes that we would not be able to agree on amendments by the October 8th, 18th meeting. Right. Okay. Um, Commissioner. I, okay. I'm sorry. I was getting a little confused, I guess. Okay. Well, let's take the last comments from Commissioner Nichols and O'Sullivan, then try to summarize with all of us in discussion here. So <laughs> it, it seems to me that we have laid out a schedule where October 18th, we intend to vote on amendments. Uh -huh. Commissioner Juarez has said that if he sees something that's missing or he doesn't agree, he reserves the right to present additional amendments and that is absolutely his right. Uh -huh. um, uh, I'm assuming that the 18th, we're going to finish up our 
the work on the draft. Yeah. And I'm suggesting that then October 25th, we would vote to approve the final plan. That gives seven days of comment between the amendments and plan. And then uh, we would, we would uh, file it. So that also means that if Commissioner Juarez has support for amendments, further amendments on the 25th, it gives us some time to deal with those uh, if we choose to uh, and, uh, and not risk uh, uh, going over uh, the schedule uh, limitation. So if we aim for the 25th to vote on the plan and it works, great. If it doesn't work, we have a little bit of time to deal with that. Um, and that's why I'm suggesting unless there's value to a two week delay uh, with that we aim for the 25th to vote on the plan. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Nichols. Commissioner Sullivan. I, I guess I just want to understand. Um, so if if we uh, vote on amendments on the 18th and then King County elections has some changes, some tweaks that need to be made so that we're not splitting up precincts, then wouldn't those changes have to be made on the 25th? And then we still need a meeting after that to a uh, that's at least one week after the 25th in order to adopt the final map. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that was the intent with the buffer time to allow for any of those changes. So we have a revised proposal, but also considering what Commissioner Sullivan just said, we can have October 18th be the vote on amendments. And then the 25th being the time to allow for any possible change that comes from the King County elections votes. And then we have the next meeting date to be the place where we have a final vote. What? On once we yeah. adopt amendments on the 18th, Madam Chair, couldn't mm -hmm. we then ask King County Elections for their their comments at that point? Yeah, we could. And then the 25th, we would know if they have any changes. Yep, absolutely. And we could then ad adapt to, to that feedback. Great. Well, Thank you for really nice back there. Then that brings us back to the proposal that you just shared, which is October 18th, we vote on the amendments. I would like us to be able to wrap up here in a couple of minutes. Uh, October 25th, we vote on the final plan. And then at the next meeting, we are, we've submitted our uh, map. Commissioner Shah? Just add in that on, this makes a lot of sense to me on October 25th, vote to approve final plan, including any amendments from King County. So we've covered that we're gonna make sure that staff no. is on with King County, right? And then we, we should, yeah. fine, right? Uh, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. No, if you're, if you're okay. making any amendments, you have to restart the clock to wait a week again. Yes. So if you're voting on a, on a, if you're, if you're amending, if you're making an amendment to, you know, respond to King County suggestions, then the final map has to get kicked back a, at least a week from November twenty, uh, from October twenty fifth. Yep. What okay, comes so by October eighteenth? We have to have King County feedback. Hmm. Right. That doesn't seem too feasible. But... So vote on amendments, yeah. including the King County elections feedback, on the eighteenth. Well, I would say remember everybody that if King County does do feedback and you determine that that feedback should be voted on and, and uh, the, the draft map should be amended, you can decide to not vote to approve the final plan on the 25th and instead adopt the King County elections recommendations or recommendations from a different party. I'm using them as an example. Um, and then kick the final vote into November. Again, that's, what, that's the whole reason why we want these buffered times is to, to is for contingencies okay so commissioner shah
Commissioner Nichols. Thank you, Madam Chair. So today we're going to have what we believe to be most of the amendments on the table. We have, I think, fortuitously contracted with King County to be our GIS consultant. It seems to me that with those draft amendments, we should be able to ask King County elections if these uh, split precincts. And therefore on the 18th, we could deal with the, uh, with the amendments as amended perhaps uh, to reflect that feedback. So at the 18th, we'd vote on our amendments and then we would give a week. And then on the 25th, we'd vote on a final plan. Uh, recognizing that these amendments don't have particular standing other than they are the expressed intent of, of commissioners. Yeah. It seems to me we could get King County elections feedback uh, and that we have a good way of, of getting that because we, uh, we work with King County GIS and uh, they should be able to help us get those answers. Great. Well, I would like to take chair privilege here and help us wrap up. We're spending most of our meeting time on the schedule and we have to discuss some of the proposed amendments. Uh, October 18th will be the date that we consider for a vote on our amendments. Uh, and we're hoping that the amendments that are being proposed today are fully representative of most of the needs. Uh, and by that meeting, we would have had from the King County elections team on any feedback they have. And then we'll keep the uh, Tuesday, October 25th as a possible place for if there are any amendments that we had an oversight on, we can spend time um, taking that feedback by then and incorporating any final changes there. But without any change, we will have a final vote happen the next meeting date. Thumbs up or thumbs down to help us proceed here. From Gosh, I, I apologize, Chair, but could we just hear for 30 seconds from Dennis Higgins about whether or not he'd be able to run the amendments by King County elections? Dennis? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Commissioners. Um, yeah, um, I, not having spoken with Mary, but knowing pretty well how King County elections work, works, I think that uh, what Commissioner Nichols suggested is good, that if you keep your amendments as you're considering them from this point forward in whole precinct increments to the extent that you can do that, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to quickly you're going to greatly reduce any chance that um, King County elections is going to have a problem with your proposals. Well, that's really helpful, Dennis, thank you. So with that consideration, then we will maintain that it's October 18th, where we have our amendments, including feedback from King County elections. And then we'll have a final vote uh, at the October 25th meeting. And then after that, we're submitting the map. Elsa, if this is related to the timeline, I would like to take a vote from commissioners to agree to this revised vision. So over to you for comments. Um, Commissioner Chair, I just wanna make sure that we're changing November 1st for October 31st meeting, just to make sure that that is the case. October 31st seems to work for most commissioners. Um, Commissioner Sullivan, I don't think we had from you if that date works. That, that date does work for me, I'll, but I'll just note if, if we do end up pushing things back so that we're voting on, that we're still making changes on October 25th, then an, an October 31st meeting isn't going to work. So I wonder if it makes more sense to look at November 2nd for that? I don't know. Well, we, we don't have to sort that out here. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, that'll be a tentative date. I think at this point, we're aiming to vote on October 25th. With that said, uh, we'll take a motion to move scenario two as amended. Uh, Moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Majority carries and uh, we have an amended schedule. 
With that, we'll move ahead to public comment and apologize to the folks that have been waiting to testify for the amount of time we've taken here in discussing our schedule. We have folks who uh, signed up prior to testify. Uh, we do have uh, Tara Geller, who's on the call. Uh, you will be up first, and you'll be followed by Anne Goss, who's on the call, uh, to speak right up to you. So Tara, over to you. Uh, yes, hi, I'm Tara Gallagher. I'm a resident of current District 6. And I'm here again to ask that no part of Fremont be put in District 7. It's not about dividing Fremont in three anywhere near as much as it is about our complete lack of any relationship with the rest of District 7. If Fremont somehow were divided among three districts north of the canal, which you know, isn't logically possible, it would be less than ideal, but acceptable. The part of Fremont that's currently in District 4, the part west east of 99, manages as their concerns are connected to and shared with Wallingford. Because Fremont relates to Wallingford and Ballard and Finney. We consider those our neighbors. We know what's happening there. We have favorite restaurants and preferred hardware stores in those neighborhoods. We know where the quiet encampments and the loud bars are in those areas. We know the libraries, playgrounds, the bus stops and potholes and bad drainage areas and the fire stations and substations. Their city issues and ours intermingle. We are a united community. We can walk to Ballard or Fanny or take one bus. Now, when you cross the Fremont Bridge towards Queen Anne, you're looking at a lot of no streets or do not enter. We don't even go off into Queen Anne because the driving connection is not easy. Walking connection, incredibly difficult. To get there by bus takes going downtown and doubling back on a second bus. Queen Anne flows into uptown, into downtown. That's the logical district. However it looks on paper, Fremont is not in any practical or spiritual way, a contiguous neighborhood to Queen Anne and the rest of District 7. Our logical city council district connections are here, north of the water. The connection between Interbay and Magnolia and Ballard is a lot closer. The 15th Avenue bridge goes directly to residences and businesses on both sides with easy connecting access. Since the district has to cross the water, that's a logical connection. Fremont and Queen Anne is not. I would ask that commissioners to please respond to the concern that Fremont is not connected to District 7 and further ask for a comment on concerns that going across the water twice in District 6 and 7 violates the requirement that to the extent practical boundaries shall follow existing waterways. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Tara. And you're up next, and you'll be followed by Linda Clifton. Hi, Commissioners. Uh, Anne Ghost, ooh, can you hear me? Yes. Yay, that's good. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Excellent. We um, want to say something from the chamber that I think is really important after Saturday. We want to be fully on record, and we have talked to the fine folks of Redistricting Justice for Seattle on phone calls, that we really do support the efforts of all Seattle residents that are dedicated to ensuring that marginalized, underrepresented communities are kept together particularly evident in the newly proposed districts one and two. We have never been against the fine work that they've done or the time that they have spent working on this. And we applaud that districts one and two are indeed communities of interest and reflect the work of the Redistricting Justice Coalition. All of our neighborhoods should be heard in the redistricting process as it does indeed make Seattle a more equitable, just, and inclusive place for residents to engage with their elected council members. A unified Magnolia 
aligns with this vision for Seattle. And it recognizes other communities' needs and the redistricting charter goals. We support the redistricting commission's ongoing efforts that keeps as many identified communities of interest whole while avoiding fracturing communities to the most extent practical. We're confident that the commission will find these win-win solutions and we strongly support your ongoing efforts to listen and to respond to public comments and address concerns. We do maintain that Magnolia is a definable community of interest, but that does not mean that we don't support the goals of keeping districts one and two together. We simply as a community want to stay together because as we have talked about the unique geography and topography. We also know that some of our issues aren't particularly lofty and may not seem as important as others, but for those of us who use bridges, three of them to get in and out, those are people issues. How we get in and out of our neighborhood is some of the most personal issues, particularly if you've ever experienced, like West Seattle and District 2, you lose a bridge. That's an impact on everyday lives of citizens that are important to remember. We again, thank you for your hard work. We heard the passion on Saturday. We've listened and we just wanna say we are dedicated to keeping all of Seattle as equitable as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Following Anne is Linda Clifton. Uh, and then we'll move on to the folks who have raised their hand. I see Eric Phil as the next person after Linda Clifton. Linda, if you are speaking, we cannot hear you. Okay, Linda, we'll allow time for you to be able to unmute yourself. Feel free to speak once ready and move on to Eric for now. Eric Pill. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, my name is Eric Peel and I'm a member of the Fremont Neighborhood Council um, Board. Uh, I've heard in the, uh, one of the past meetings that it was talked about that Fremont uh, and North Queen Anne um, work together that's not that may be true and the commercial side and the um, chamber of commerce but with as we look at issues around the residents of fremont which is who we represent the issues are alike with with wallingford and with ballard we we are part of the north precinct uh we're a very activist oriented community and as you've read in our letter and we've worked very hard in collaboration with the north precinct and with the city attorney's office and with the city council in the past to deal address major public safety issues and we've done that successfully. Um, we um, see that we are better aligned being on the north side of the ship canal because otherwise moving as part of district seven we are a small voice in a much more larger district that may not be uh, heard. Um, we are a district of a lot of uh, renters um, and workforce housing and so um, and, a, and a growingly diverse neighborhood. And so um, we would obviously prefer to be as one entire district altogether, but we recognize that's not practical. We found a way to make it work to be in two. Um, district four and district six makes the most sense. If it's not practical to be in one, then uh, in, in two and this six and four, then we would propose moving the entire district, uh, entire neighborhood into district four if possible. Those are my comments. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I don't see Linda being back here on the list, but Linda, feel free to raise your hand once you're here. We'll go to Andrew Hong and then go to Joseph Blackman. Andrew, over to you. Hi, commissioners. My name is Andrew Hong. I'm a resident in District 2 and a statewide coordinator of the Redistricting Justice for Washington Coalition. Um, Today, I want to, you know, after the overwhelming public testimony on October 8th's public hearing, um, sorry, 
uh, we believe that the commission, if the commission is truly dedicated to making this a public guided and informed process that works for the whole city, the commission should adopt the RGS map and make corresponding changes. Over three fourths of the testifiers who came from all seven districts, including coalition members and just regular residents who aren't a part of the coalition but support RJS in the public, uh, came on Saturday and voiced their support for the redistricting justice for Seattle map. This is the first time the public can shape our own districts in the Seattle City Council. And the commission should act accordingly to the majority of the public, not just one neighborhood, to fulfill this promise to the residents of Seattle. And so uh, because of that, the uh, RJS coalition submitted a memo yesterday or uh, two days ago uh, with a series of three different amendments that we urge the commissioners to consider and vote on in the in these final few weeks. Uh, the first amendment, a uh, full detail and description and maps of these amendments can be found, um, I think, in your email. I sent it to the uh, City Redistricting Commission email. Um, the first amendment that we'd like uh, you all to consider is a full adoption of the RGS map amendment. Um, a second uh, amendment that we proposed is the quote unquote Green Lake amendment in which uh, respond to public comment and coalition members uh, from the Green Lake and Meridian Roosevelt area would move all of Green Lake and Meridian into district four and subsequently move Wedgwood from district four to five and Greenwood would be fully reunited in district six um, and by taking parts from District 5 and putting those parts of Greenwood in District 6. And then the third amendment uh, that we urge the Commission to consider is has already been proposed by Commissioner Bawaba, but it is to um, keep Fremont within District 4 and 6 and subsequently move the District 7 and 6 boundary um, to 28th Avenue in Magnolia. A full description and uh, maps of these moments can be found in the memo as well as our own reasoning for um, each of these different amendments. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, you'll be followed by Joseph. Uh, and after Joseph, Linda Clifton will try to come back to you if you're able to unmute. Joseph, over to you. Thank you. Um... Thank you, commissioners, for the opportunity to speak again. My name is Joseph Shoji Lachman, uh, policy manager at Asian Counseling and Referral Service, and also helping the Coley Redistricting Justice for Seattle. Um, I just want to take a moment again to emphasize that, uh, in alignment, of course, with Andrew as well, that we believe the commission uh, really should approve um, just the um, map proposal that's been put forward by Redistricting Justice for Seattle based on. Um, the amount of community input that has gone into it and the fact that um, it splits communities um, as little as possible in terms of uh, splitting residents from uh, their, their main uh, council district. Um, again, also like to emphasize that for me personally, I grew up and I spent most of my life in the Magnolia area. Um, while I am a, currently a, dis uh, a district two resident, um, I'm deeply familiar with the geography um, and the um, and just the you know how Magnolia is laid out and uh, you know my my parents um, still live in Magnolia at 27th Avenue. Um, they have been renters all their lives, and there it is um, uh, a fact that just a large number of renters do live on the other side of 28th Avenue. And yes, um, I understand concerns about splitting up communities, but Again, I believe that uh, folks from Fremont have also spoken up on their own behalf that Fremont should not be split into three districts um, just to keep Magnolia whole. And at the same time, uh, I know some of the Magnolia have brought up concerns that issues like the Magnolia Bridge uh, being addressed, you know, it's, it's important. But um, Magnolia being in two districts would not preclude uh, residents being able to speak up to multiple council members um, about the bridge issue being um, addressed and. I fully believe that you know Magnolia will still be able to have um, you know their ability to shape how their uh, their their community uh, you know is treated by uh, by their local government, um, while also being uh, much more fair to other communities who are also seeking to have equitable representation. Again, please 
uh, we urge you to pass the redistricting justice, uh, to adopt the redistricting justice for Seattle uh, map proposal because of how it has uh, incorporated uh, hundreds of members of the community's uh, feedback and does the best job of keeping um, communities in uh, in their own, um, keeping neighborhoods in their own districts. Um, and again, thank you for the opportunity to speak and please, um, I, I hope you'll uh, ensure that there are opportunities for community members to um, give comment before, um, again, before the commission makes their final vote. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, Linda Clifton, followed by Win Win. Hi, this is Linda Clifton. I'm a member of the Fremont Neighborhood Council Board. We sent you a um, some, some, some comments and I wanna reiterate the main points here. But first I wanna say thank you for the hard work that this really is. I think today's discussion of scheduling illustrates how difficult it is. I also wanna say that Tara Gallagher who spoke before was quite elegant eloquent on a number of the issues that we in Fremont feel about being split and being split in a way that makes us have to cross the ship canal in order to be in uh, District 7 and then to be in three districts, not two. We have been able to operate in two districts, four and six, since districting was established. We have already written one letter that said we would we would accept being in two districts. We also have written a second letter in which we have serious concerns about being in three and particularly about district seven. Um, we also suggested in that second letter that we be put in district four if that works demographically for population balance. Our objections are many of the ones that Tara mentioned we are very, very different from the sections of Queen Anne and Magnolia with which we would be lumped. But more important, putting most of Fremont in District 7 violates one of the two of the criteria that the Commission itself is supposed to follow. That we they recognize, follow and recognize, recognized waterways and Seattle communities and neighborhoods. You have ignored the boundaries of the Fremont neighborhood, which have been established for well over 20 years. And by crossing the ship canal, you violate the following recognized waterways. Taro has already pointed out many of the difficulties about that. Worse, you also put us in two police precincts, the North Precinct where we are now and the West Precinct. And that makes for tremendous complications in the relationships that we have built up for public safety and for attention to a number of public needs. You've made Fremont a tiny minority in all three districts. So we please, please ask you to consider reuniting Fremont at least in two, if not one district. It's important to all of our residents, homeowners and renters, whom we represent in Fremont. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Linda. Uh, you will be followed by Win Win Network. Uh, and after that, we'll have Patrick Kraft. Hi, commissioners. Um, my name is Katie Stoltz. Um, I'm with the Win Win Network, as well as the Redistricting Justice for Seattle Coalition. Great to see you all again um, after Saturday's final forum and really at the tail end of this marathon process. Um, I appreciate all of you for the work that you've done to commit to public engagement and really continuing to listen to so many of us um, uh, week after week. Uh, I just wanted to touch on a few um, key points and really just to reiterate a couple of the amendments that we had sent forward in a memo um, earlier this week, um, and specifically from the perspective of a resident um, here in Green Lake. Um, I wanted to lift up an amendment that we had put forward, specifically looking at the opportunity to move Green Lake from District 6 into District 4 and Wedgwood from District 4 into District 5, and uniting Greenwood from District 5 into District 6. I currently live in the Meridian uh, neighborhood, um, which is uh, the tail end of South Green Lake. 
And really, I can speak to my experience living here that the Roosevelt, Meridian, and Green Lake neighborhoods are a, a very cohesive neighborhood. Uh, the opportunity to unite them into one district, into uh, District 4, I think would be a great opportunity for the final map. And so I urge you to pass this amendment. This was also in line with the testimony that we heard on Saturday from community members in this area. In closing, I also wanted to lift up um, really looking at Saturday's forum, over three quarters of the testifiers were from the Redistricting Justice for Seattle Coalition. And so I urge you to honor that overwhelming support and consider the RJS map and related amendments in your final map. I also wanted to lift up my appreciation to the commissioners and your comments earlier uh, around the uh, rest of the process and the dates for um, making the final decision, specifically the commitment to allowing the public the opportunity to hear amendments and really take in feedback and reflect on those changes. Um, I heard that from uh, a few of the, from, from many of you today. And so I just wanted to lift up gratitude for that commitment again to ensuring that this process has ample opportunity for, um, for feedback as this is the first time that the new lines will have had public feedback in the creation of them. I look forward to the next steps in seeing the, the final map and uh, wanted to share our support and gratitude to all of your work and to the staff working behind the scenes to make this happen. Thank you all. Thank you, Kay. Patrick, you will wrap us up here. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, holding this meeting. Uh, my name is Pat Kraft. I work, uh, volunteer my time as a senior advisor to the Magnolia Chamber of Commerce, have been former president a few times. I've also worked on the Magnolia Community Council, and I've been deeply involved in a whole variety of community activities and daily life here for some 20 years. My work actually takes me all over Seattle through all the neighborhoods, and uh, it's a great experience enjoying all the dynamics that we have uh, as a shared experience of Seattle. I wanted to comment today just to provide a little bit further qualification of who Magnolia is from my experience and work and provide that wider understanding. Magnolia, particularly Magnolia Chamber of Commerce, that Chamber of Commerce term can be often misunderstood, not the full picture. Magnolia functions Chamber of Commerce as a community group. Maybe in West Seattle, you might envision Chamber of Commerce looking down California Avenue, seeing 300 businesses. Oh, that must be the Chamber of Commerce. But in Magnolia, it's more of a a neighborhood group involved with individuals, businesses, nonprofits. Uh, it's a collective of our experience in daily life. And so that's who the Chamber of Commerce is. It's a, it's a much richer picture than some might initially perceive. So I'm calling us thank you for your good works. I appreciate what the Redistricting Commission is about. Uh, Magnolia is in full support of uh, recognizing uh, communities that have been marginalized or not, the voices have been heard. We in full endorse for that, particularly of what District 1 and District 2 is now, um, is, is you know, gonna end up on this map. This is exciting and rich for everyone. And as in all neighborhoods, we all need to be heard. We're all better for it. Um, it helps Seattle realize our full potential as a place of inclusivity, engaging all the communities with the city council. And what does the city council do? Well, their sole responsibility is about budgetary issues for daily life. We develop the laws, promote the health and the safety of all Seattle residents. And I know uh, we feel uh, thankful for your work and we want to recognize that a unified Magnolia within a district aligns perfectly with the commission and Seattle's vision um, and our goals. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and Many thanks to all of you who have testified today. Also, just to confirm that there is no one in the room who would like to provide comments in person. There is? No, Thank there's you. nobody. Wonderful. With that, we're closing off public comment, again, with a lot of gratitude to all of you for your level of engagement. I will reiterate how much your passion is really palpable and we feel it. Um, the level of commitment you have for your community uh, is deeply appreciated by all of us. With that said, I'm cognizant of time. Um, and I realize that we will not have enough time to talk about the public education work, uh, which has to happen post 
map submission, and we can carve out time for that at the next meeting. I would like us out of the interest of efficiency to have the amendments be discussed at this juncture and ask Mary if you could share the maps uh, from Commissioner Sullivan and the proposed amendment map that I have just for the public to get a full sense with your overview of what those changes are and then we'll quickly get discussions from the commissioners. Okay, um, I will go ahead and start with the map that Commissioners O'Sullivan and Shaw <clears throat> um, created. Um, so just to note, um, this particular idea also incorporates the um, amendments that um, the King County elections had suggested, which was essentially uh, taking care of some uh, census blocks that didn't have any population along the boundary between District 3 and District 2, as well as a couple of census blocks between the boundary between District 5 and District 4 right here along Lake Washington. This particular amendment um, focuses mostly on the boundary between uh, District 6 and District 7 um, and readjusts the uh, boundary to reflect the entirety of the Fremont neighborhood uh, before the, the boundary was not quite uh, what the boundary or the the neighborhood boundary was. So it follows um, 50th Northwest and North 50th, um, and then follows a Northwest 8th down to the Lake Washington Ship Canal. There is a slight um, version or a little incursion, I guess, maybe, of uh, District 6 onto uh, Northwest Queen Anne here uh, to make up the numbers uh, to make sure that the numbers between District 6 and Dis District 7 worked with population there. Um, and that is essentially what is happening with this um, amendment proposed by Commissioner O'Sullivan and Commissioner Shaw. Thank this you, is yeah. the um, other amendment on the table is one proposed by Commissioner Malaba. And this one um, makes sure that Fremont is actually remains in District 6 like it is now uh, with a portion in District 4. So no changes to Fremont and the boundary would be the Lake Washington Ship Canal. What's happening here is that there is also um, a boundary between six and seven along Northwest, excuse me, 28th Avenue West in Magnolia for the most part. It starts down here at Puget Sound, Elliott Bay, goes up 32nd um, to How West Howe Street and then follows essentially um, 30th and C Condon Way to West Mag McGraw and then follows 28th Avenue West north to uh, Manor Place and then up to Emerson Street and then Emerson Street over to 15th West Avenue West. Another uh, thing to note here is that Commissioner Mamalaba also has uh, made sure that all of Eastlake is in District 3. Um, and in order to make that work, a portion of, of First Hill is included in District 7. Thank you, so, Mary, for that comprehensive overview. Um, we'll ask at this juncture for commissioners to speak to the amendments or ask questions or additions. I will offer as you raise your hands uh, that in my proposed amendment, I would be open to incorporating the King County census blocks as we had done in the previous revised version. Uh, I would also offer to take feedback from commissioners to incorporate any amendments you would like seeing better into the proposal.
questions, comments. Okay, I will go one commissioner at a time and make sure that you get an opportunity to share your thoughts. Commissioner Sullivan was, well, see Commissioner Nichols has raised his hand. You are on mute. I have a request and that is if uh, Mary could send us a link this is the first time I've seen the O'Sullivan Shaw Amendment. Um, and if they could send, if uh, Barry could send us a link to both of these amendments so that we could look at them between now and the 18th in detail, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm sure Mary will be happy to share. She's also prepared a summary of the boundaries of our Good. Thank you. With that, let me ask commissioners, uh, Commissioner Warris, Shah O'Sullivan uh, to provide any comments and the direction you're thinking as we prepare for our discussion on October 18th. Yeah, I'm happy to go first. Um, <laughs> so I uh, appreciate the changes um, that you've made in in your map, Madam Chair, I think that the uh, the response to community from not wanting to be in District 7 was, is critically important. We have not heard a compelling reason to move them into District 7 yet from any public commenter. So um, uh, it also preserves the waterway, which I think is um, uh, spelled out for us. And I think that this is a map that earns my support. It preserves East Lake. I think it is attentive to some of the concerns we've heard from folks in Magnolia. I think there, you know, there is additional refinement that could be possible. I think this is a step in the right direction. Um, so I, I would be, uh, I am more heartened by this than the other map. Um, I also want to recognize the hard work that uh, my two other colleagues have put into that proposal, even though I don't agree with it. Um, you know, it's hard. And so uh, appreciation for them for putting in that work, but it does not earn my vote. So thank you. Commissioner Sullivan, Commissioner Shaw. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll note. Um, so uh, first of all, um, I, I noted this before, uh, I have been uh, really impressed and um, uh, 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 listened to the um, comments we've heard from the redistricting justice for Seattle coalition, they provided some tremendous guidance and, and I think our map reflects the vast majority of the guidance that they provided. Um, it, what, one of the questions that I think we need to make a determination is, is it more important to keep neighborhoods whole or is it more important to keep neighborhoods in the district that they want to be in? So we've heard that Pioneer Square would prefer to be in District 7 rather than in District 1, but we've decided to keep them whole in District 1. Uh, would Magnolia prefer to be in District, in the same district as Queen Anne, um, or, you know, uh, uh, or would it be, be better to be whole in District 6? Would Fremont um, prefer to be in the same district as Ballard or the same district as Wallingford? Or is it more important that we keep as many communities whole as possible? And so in, in developing this map, my, my goal has been to ensure that we're keeping as many communities whole as possible. I recognize that we can't put everyone in the district that they want to be in. Um, uh, but what we can do is we can listen to the voices of the Redistricting Justice Coalition, ensure that we're creating a map that recognizes the interests of historically marginalized communities and keeping as many communities whole as possible. Um, and, uh, and I think that this is, that's been my thought process throughout this, uh, throughout this process. Thank you, Commissioner Sullivan. 
comments from other commissioners? Well, I can wrap this up here. I will add to the points that you raised, Commissioner O'Sullivan, that the commitment really is to keep as many communities as we can wall. Um, I have listened intently to all of the feedback we've had from different communities across the city. And my commitment uh, to this process is that we ultimately are looking at all of the neighborhoods and aiming towards an equitable map, an equitable map that gives um, a voice to all neighborhoods across the city. And that's why I've been very intentional in looking at Magnolia, wanting to be responsive to community needs and getting to a solution that treats all of our communities in the most fair approaches we can in this process. It's been a difficult process in doing so, as you all know, but I think the level of commitment we have from all of you as commissioners has been encouraging. You're going out there, talking to community and working towards a solution. And ultimately, our solution is not going to be one that's a zero sum solution. It'll be a win-win solution. And I think the proposals we have before us are a path. I will continue to advocate for the amendments that I've shared here. We've tried as much as we can to incorporate feedback from all parts of the community. And I think preserving the business district in Magnolia is a commitment that we uh, extended with the revised map. With that said, I know we have to jump off at 1.30. We'll take any final comments, uh, but without any of those, we'll talk about the next meeting here. Commissioner Shah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm curious from... Commissioner Juarez to see whether after hearing or seeing these two amendments, whether you think you'll be bringing forward another amendment to look at. And if you haven't decided yet, that's okay too. Um, I'm looking through the, the memo that we were sent. Um, I'm looking through letters from different neighborhoods here. Um, I'm trying to be responsive to the most number of people who participated in the process of which those people have identified themselves as members of RJS Seattle. Um, I'm not sure that the map, um, that one of the amendments here, given that it is um, very different from two of the three recommendations they make, um, satisfies that. I think we've been asked by a number of community members to approve the RJS map. So I'd like to introduce um, uh, at least a discussion or an amendment or some process for us to consider that map that has been sent to us in the um, 1010 RJS memo. Uh, I would like that to be considered. I do not plan on offering any other amendments besides that. Thank you, Commissioner Juarez. And I would offer that I would be open to amendments to the draft proposal that I've made here. Uh, if they don't fully represent what we've had from community, I haven't had a chance to rework any edits. Commissioner O'Sullivan, you will be wrapping us closer here and then I'll close the meeting. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure I understand Commissioner Wars. So is uh, Commissioner Wars, is it, is, it, is it your intent to introduce the RGS map as a whole? Is that is that going to be your proposed amendment? Yes. Uh, in direct response from what we've heard from the public, yes. Yes. So that said, we will have three amendments to vote on at the next meeting. Is that accurate? Okay. So we'll ask staff to share uh, the three proposed amendments as discussed, uh, what came out of the work that Commissioner Sullivan and Shah have been doing in looking at the revised map, uh, the proposed amendment that I shared, and then Commissioner Warris has asked that we have the RRJS uh, map be up for discussion. With that 
said, we are closer to 1.30 and I do have to jump. I have a hard stop. Uh, we'll take one comment from Commissioner Shah and then we'll talk about the next meeting. Just to clarify, at the next meeting, which is October 18th, we would be voting on all three of those amendments. Is that accurate? Not a discussion. We're actually voting on all three. Yes. Okay, thank you. We will be voting on one final amendment, and then we'll have a final MEP discussion at the next meeting. Am I correct in understanding it that way? Great. So one amendment will carry with or without edits. Either way, we'll be informed by what we discuss at that meeting. All right, Commissioner Juarez, if it is not pressing, well, we will, okay, wonderful. I do have a, an interview that's coming up here with folks as we went towards staffing. Uh, October 18th is the next meeting date that we have. And at that meeting, we will aim to discuss uh, both the proposed amendments and the uh, public education effort that will happen post map adoption. Uh, we will also talk about the resolution that's going to help us submit the final map. You've likely received an email from Elsa, and if you have not, she will she will be happy to resend that your way. We're asking commissioners to submit a paragraph speaking to the different uh, map adjustments that you've made or proposals that you've made to be incorporated in that resolution. It's really meant to hear from you what the intent was in uh, making any changes there. Commissioner Shah, quick comment. I suggest, I think you asked for that deadline for this Friday. And since yeah. we don't know which, it seems like that the writing should go along with whatever our final map is so that you might may consider the deadline. Yes, what if we get preliminary intent and if the boundaries have to be further changed, staff needs to have a draft to be reacting from and trying to pull the resolution together. And by the point we have our final map, we should have a final resolution. Elsa, am I right in assuming it would help for you to get some draft language now uh, so you have something to work off from? Wonderful. Correct. Okay. Commissioner Juarez, and then we really take I know I know you need to go, but um, yeah. I want to make sure that we're clear with staff that the three options that we're discussing next week will go up on the website for the public. And then yes. when, when should the public anticipate that they're posted? Yes. Correct. We will do that. Awesome. All right. Anything else? With that, we will take a motion to close the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone saying nay? With that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Great job, Madam Chair. Thank you.